So yesterday when I was telling you that there is a specific night known as the night of watching for the redemption from God and the appearance of the Lord, that is a specific night in Jewish belief and it happened to be the very night that Jesus partook of the Passover Seder, but he did not drink the third cup, which is the cup of redemption, which he plans to drink with us when we go to be where he is. And it is the betrothal cup that we partake of when we remember him in the Passover Seder with the communion. And so this is something that I recently discovered so Jesus was about to become the Passover lamb and this is when they sang this hymn was at the time of their required sacrifices in the temple of Jerusalem. So there was a reason why they were singing it because he was about to become the sacrifice and so it is a song of praise and the Psalms expressed faith in and gratitude for divine providence. Though a benediction usually precedes and follows recitation of the Psalms, the preceding benediction is omitted on the eve of Passover. The Talmud stipulates that a reading from the book of Esther should replace the Hallel on Purim. In time, the term Hallel came to mean the great Hallel, Psalm 136, which is used in the morning service on the Sabbath festivals and during the Passover Seder. The half Hallel parts of Psalm 115 and 116 are omitted, is used on the last six days of Passover and on the new moon. Now it says, since Passover involved only a partial redemption of the Jews and the destruction of Egypt and as the same sacrifice was offered in the temple on every day of the holiday as opposed to Sukkot only half or partial Hallel is recited on all of the last six days of Passover. At the end of the Passover meal Matthew and Mark state that the disciples sang a hymn with Jesus before departing. They were heading out to the Mount of Olives to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And that's where he told them to watch on the night the Jews were told to watch for their redemption. And this is why I believe from Scripture that it's possible that when Jesus told us to watch that Perhaps that is the night of our redemption that, you know, we're to be taken up in the glory cloud. I don't know, but I'm just presenting the scriptures. And uh, it says, while scripture doesn't explicitly state which hymn was sung, Jewish tradition reveals that the Passover meal was concluded by singing the last portion of the Hallel. So if they sang the last portion of the Hallel, and they are singing a joyous celebration of praise and thanksgiving to God when they're singing the Hallel. So, if we look at these Psalms, we see that there are many references to the eventual salvation of the Lord's people brought by the death and resurrection of Messiah. This is especially true of Psalm 118, which served as the conclusion of the Passover meal. The singing of Psalm 118 is incredibly profound when considering the events that were taking place around Jesus and his disciples. It praises God for his goodness and protection. The last nine verses are of particular importance to the Passover week and are often sung twice to conclude the hymn. Upon Jesus' triumphal entry celebrated today as Palm Sunday, the crowd shouted, verse 26 which says blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord the Hallel would have been on the minds of the people during Passover week so Jesus knew this is when he was challenged by the chief priests 
later that day as he ascribed verses 22 through 23 to himself. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and is marvelous to our eyes. He reveals that he is the cornerstone that would be rejected but would become the firm and eternal foundation upon which our salvation is built. During Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, verse 27 speaks of taking the sacrifice and binding it to the cords of the altar. We know that Jesus was about to lay down his life as a sacrifice for all mankind. The last two verses offer praise to God. It's incredible to think that Jesus and the disciples were singing these words in the last hours before the crucifixion and resurrection. The disciples did not understand what was about to happen, but Jesus certainly did. The salvation of which and the redemption of which the Jewish people had been singing for for hundreds of thousands of years was about to unfold before their eyes. Jesus was the one who came in the name of the Lord. He was the stone that was rejected but would become the cornerstone. He was the sacrifice that was about to be given for the sins of all mankind. How wonderful it is for us to reflect upon the words of Psalm 118 that were sung that evening as they sang in verse 23, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. What proves to me that they were singing that part of the Hillel is the very fact that, that this is what they sang on the three festivals and they were giving praise to God as they were giving their sacrifices and offered them to God and Jesus was about to become the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now the great Hallel Psalm 136 this passage is unique among the Psalms because the refrain his love endures forever is repeated throughout all 26 verses of that psalm. And what did we learn in John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So not only that, the night of watching is when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane after they sang that, and he kept telling his disciples, couldn't you just watch? And it was the night of watching. And that specifically watching for the redemption. So there was something going on there that we've never known was ever in that text because of the Jewish meaning of it being lost to Christianity knowing that the Jews were waiting for the redemption and watching on that specific night when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane with the disciples then that is a time to be watching for the Lord's return that's what I believe now I'm not saying that the rapture is going to happen on that night I've had you know crazy people come on here and wail about the rapture because they don't want to go but that's fine. You don't have to go. Stay here. So let's look at Psalm 118, what they were singing, and let's see what it says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So let Israel now say, for his mercy endureth forever. So let the house of Aaron now say, for his mercy endureth forever. So let them now that fear the Lord say, for his mercy endureth forever. Out of my straits I called upon the Lord. He answered me with great enlargement. The Lord is for me. I will not fear what can man do unto me. The Lord is for me as my helper, and I shall gaze upon them that hate me. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations compass me about. Verily in the name of the Lord I will cut them off. They compass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. Verily in the name of the Lord I will cut them off. 
Thou didst thrust sore at me, that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he is become my Yeshua, my salvation. Oh, my word. Do you grasp that, that they're heading to the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of watching for God to come to bring the redemption and he's sitting here singing that God has become my Yeshua, my salvation? Wow! And they were in the garden with Yeshua on the night of watching for the redemption. <laughs> which is the Hallel that they were singing as they offer the sacrifices. And he was the sacrifice. This is unbelievable. So the name Yeshua means salvation. So when you're reading, and he has become my salvation, you're saying, the Lord is my strength and my song. He is become my Yeshua. The voice of rejoicing and Yeshua is in the tents of the righteous. The salvation. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live. Because he's bringing you eternal life through his sacrifice. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter into them. I will give thanks unto the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Now remember, Jesus said he is the gate of the sheep. And all who enter in must do so through him. So right there, this is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter into it. I will give thanks unto thee, for thou hast answered me, and art become my salvation, and art become my Yeshua. The stone which the builders rejected is become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We beseech thee, O Lord, save now. And that's exactly what he was doing as they were singing this. He was saving them from the wrath to come. And not only that, but giving them eternal salvation. We beseech thee, O Lord, make us now to prosper. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Israel won't see him again until they're saying this in the Hallel. Do you understand what that means? That their redemption, uh, the night of watching for the redemption, they're singing this. Um, let's see, where is it? Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He said, you will not see me again until you say that. So you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they'll be saying that when they're singing this Hallel during the Passover Seder at the end of it. Okay, so it says, we bless you out of the house of the Lord. We bless you out of the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and hath given us light. He's the light that shined out of Galilee of the nations. Order the festival procession with boughs, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will give thanks unto thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So that's saying that not only is he God, but he has become my Yeshua, my salvation, which is Messiah's name. And he's giving us eternal life. So that was Psalm 118. Now they call Psalm 136, which is separate, the great Hallel. 
And it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His loving devotion endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His loving devotion endures forever. Thanks to the Lord of lords. His loving devotion endures forever. He alone does great wonders. His loving devotion endures forever. So this would have been sung probably kind of like an echo. You had one set of voices singing the first line and then another set of voices singing his love endures forever and then the other person would say he spread out the earth upon the waters and then his love endures forever he made the great lights his devotion endures forever the sun to rule the day his loving devotion endures forever the moon and the stars to govern the night his loving devotion endures forever he struck down the firstborn of Egypt. His loving devotion endures forever and brought Israel out from among them. His loving devotion endures forever with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His loving devotion endures forever. He divided the Red Sea in two. His loving devotion endures forever and led Israel through the midst. His loving devotion endures forever but swept Pharaoh and his army into the sea. So right there it tells you that Pharaoh went into the water, which sometimes is questioned by people whether Pharaoh actually, you know, went into the sea with his army. Right there it tells you that he did. His loving devotion endures forever. He led his people through the wilderness. His loving devotion endures forever. He struck down great kings. His loving devotion endures forever. And slaughtered mighty kings. His loving devotion endures forever. Sion king of the Amorites. His loving devotion endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his loving devotion endures forever. And he gave their land as an inheritance. His loving devotion endures forever. A heritage to his servant Israel. His loving devotion endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate. His loving devotion endures forever and freed us from our enemies. His loving devotion endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His loving devotion endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His loving devotion endures forever. You know, this is a really special psalm in the middle of the Hallel, Psalm 116. And I remember reading this to my kitty cat the night that he was slowly dying before my eyes and I turned to Psalm 116 which is part of the Hillel and is the Lord has heard my voice I love the Lord for he has heard my voice my appeal for mercy because he has inclined his ear to me I will call on him as long as I live now listen the ropes of death entangled me the anguish of Sheol overcame me I was confronted by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, deliver my soul. This is part of the Hillel they were singing. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord preserves the simple-hearted. I was helpless, and I often feel that way. And he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Can you imagine that Jesus is about to go into the tomb on the Feast of Unleavened Bread and rise from death to life? bringing us eternal life as they're singing this hallel i don't know how much of it they sang but it says you have delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears and my feet from stumbling i will walk before the lord in the land of the living i believed therefore i said i'm greatly afflicted in my alarm i said all men are liars how can i repay the lord for all his goodness to me listen to this they were even singing about this. I will lift up the cup of salvation. The cup of salvation during the Passover Seder that they had just eaten. 
and I will call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So when you die, you're in the Lord. You are precious to him. And he preserves your soul. And he brings your your spirit and your soul back with him when he comes and resurrects the body out of the grave and you become this glorified version of your former corruptible self that is now made immortal. Truly, O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have broken my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You know, I did not know the significance of that psalm when I was reading it to my little animal that I dearly loved. But knowing that now it's part of the Hallel that Jesus was singing on the night of the Jews watching for the redemption and God's appearing, God coming and redeeming them on that night. That is that night that he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, repeatedly telling them to watch. Watch, therefore. It is the night of watching to the Jewish people. So when Jesus is telling us, watch, is this the specific night? Is this what he was talking about? I believe it is. And the Lord has revealed all this. And let's go to Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his loving devotion towards us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Hallelujah. That is absolutely stunning to realize that they were singing that last part of the Hallel, probably the Psalm 118 portion, where it actually did say, The Lord has become my salvation, which is Yeshua. <laughs> and they were in the garden with Yeshua because they're going to be given everlasting life and return to the Garden of Eden-like state. But he became the sacrifice after the Passover Seder happened, and they were singing this Hallel. He became the offering that, he, that God offered to us himself to return us to the Garden of Eden-like state by giving us the Holy Spirit, which John 14 tells us that the, he will not leave us as orphans, but... The Holy Spirit will come and live with us and in us. So we've got a friend. We've got the best friend we could ever have to depend on. Now there's something else that's really exciting. Okay, now in regards to Judaism and the Jews believing that Passover, the night of watching when they partake of the Passover meal, the night of watching is the name of the night after the Passover feast, when God redeemed Israel by slaying the firstborn sons of Egypt. So what happened? God slew his firstborn son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah. Wow. In Jewish tradition, it is said that just as God redeemed the people on this night, so he will one day redeem them again. It's fascinating to see how God did this very thing by offering his own son to redeem his people. So right there when he was in the garden, they all surrounded him and took him into custody and they bound him just like they bound the lamb sacrifice. And incredibly, on the night of watching, under the fullness of the Passover moon, the night all Israel hoped, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Deliverer, would come, and he was there in the garden, waiting to be taken to become the sin offering for the world. 
Now, what's really astounding is that when I was back at home with mom, we had that, I believe it was the April 14th, 2014, lunar eclipse, and I went out the front door, which actually faces Jerusalem, and I set up my camera. The lunar eclipse started right up there, right above where my house was, and there were no clouds all night, and it was the most perfect, bright red, blood red color on the night of the Exodus, on the night of the death of the firstborn, on the night that Jesus gave salvation and redeemed his people. The night of watching is that night. So they were waiting for the redemption, and here was the Messiah in the garden. Oh, it's all so complex and so fascinating how he interwove this whole message that it's just incredible to pull one thread and they all come, you know? Now this is from the En Gedi Resource Center, which I find interesting, by Lois Tverberg. It says in Exodus 1242, It was a night of watching for the Lord to bring them out from the land of Egypt. Oh. Did you pick up on that? We are, I mean, the world is considered to be Egypt. It's a portrayal of Egypt. The night of watching was the night of watching for the Lord to bring them out. So the night of watching, will it be the night he t brings us out? Watching that I'm telling you he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. When we have a Passover, is this the night that he's going to bring us out of literally the world known as Egypt? It's a parallel to Egypt. It goes on and says, and so on this night... All Israel is to keep the vigil, or the watch, to the Lord for generations to come. Now this is a Jewish source, but most know that the Jewish Passover celebration focuses on remembering how God redeemed his people from Egypt, but it also looks forward to God's final redemption in the coming of the Messiah. <laughs> And there he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. The command to remember the deliverance from Egypt is clear to us, but it might be a mystery as to where Jewish people find the idea that they should look forward to redemption as well. The answer is in Exodus 12, 42, that says that all Israel is to keep vigil or watch for generations to come. They saw this as meaning that they should be watching for what great thing that God would do next. Oh, this is chilling, you all. Or y'all. <laughs> Passover begins with the setting of the sun, as all days do in the Hebrew calendar. As the feast day begins, people are mindful of the need to watch for what God will be doing through the night and in the day ahead. The traditional way to observe this command is to open the front door of the home and look out to show that you are standing alert. Typically, one of the children opened the door to see if Elijah is there because Malachi says that he will come before the Messiah. Behold, I send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly, ooh, I want to say in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant, whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Malachi 3, 1 and 4 through 4, 5. In Jesus' time, of course, he explains that John the Baptist fulfilled the role of Elijah who would come before him. So he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah, just like Elisha 
was given a double portion of Elijah's um, power when he took his mantle. It's fascinating in light of this tradition that Messiah really did complete his mission of dying for our sins on the very day they were looking for their Redeemer. Oh, on the night of the redemption. Oh, they were looking for the Redeemer to come. Late at night, just hours after the Passover meal, Jesus was arrested in the garden, and in the wee hours, he stood trial. Before the next day had fully begun, he was being led out to death. Jesus' words to his disciples in Matthew 26, 40 take on special meaning to me now. Could you not keep watch with me for just one hour? Wow. This is so powerful, you guys. I am just so blown away. Because I couldn't believe it when the Lord showed me that there was a very specific night to watch. And it had to do with the Exodus, with departing out of Egypt. And this is when they were singing the hello. Oh, and behold, the Lord was in the garden, redeeming us back to the garden. Oh, because he was going to send his spirit to indwell us. To to breathe the breath of eternal life into our being so we could live forever with him in that eternal garden. Oh man, I feel like crying. It's so awesome. So incredible, so intricate the way he wove this. And by the way, I just saw, you know, they just um, legalized putting wine in the grocery stores. They had an entire row all the way down of wine bottles and right in the middle, I spotted this blackberry wine that's kosher for Passover. And I thought, maybe that, I'll try to get that if I can. And I don't know, I don't drink wine, but I do like to have it for the Passover Seder and just kind of sip it a little bit. But one time I found a bottle of wine from Galilee, and I was so excited, you know. Um, that was really thrilling. I still have the bottle of it. So I had it on the Passover. But just think of what this means. If that's the night of watching, and that's the night to depart out of Egypt, then he's telling us a specific night to watch for him. Because that's what they're supposed to be doing. So let's look at the word vigil, because it said that Israel was to keep a vigil on that night for generations to come. Vigil is defined as a period of keeping awake during the time usually spent asleep, especially to keep watch or pray. And what did he say? In Luke 21, what did Jesus say? But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch, therefore, and pray. That's a vigil. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now with that definition, it says keeping awake, keeping watch as opposed to being asleep. So what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? Okay, remember that the Hallel mentions taking the cup of salvation. And here we have the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane in Mark 14, verse 32. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Simon Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, Now remember, these were the three that were set apart as Kadesh and taken to see him in the transfiguration. So he was trans 
transfigured before their eyes into his glorified state, and they went into the cloud. The cloud covered them as this was happening. So this is kind of like a symbolic of the rapture, that we go into the cloud of the Lord. So he took Simon Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. Okay, so we have... Psalm 116 that speaks about I shall not die but live. It's the night of watching and he's telling them stay here and watch. And he went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Simon Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray. That's a vigil by definition. And Israel was commanded to always keep a vigil on that night of watching. Those were the words, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep. That's the opposite, like you're supposed to stay awake in a vigil and not sleep. So he said, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And of course, in the first part of the Hillel, it keeps saying that he's surrounded by all these people. And this is what happened. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal saying, Whomever I kiss, he's the one, seize him, and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him, and one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. You know why? Because the Bible's always saying, Let he who has an ear, let him hear. And that means you're to go back in Scripture and find where it happened in the Old Testament because it'll be in a story somewhere there. So they weren't listening to the prophets. They were not seeing that this was their Messiah. So he cut off the ear, symbolic of them not hearing. Then Jesus answered and said to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. This story is so complex and so full of revelations of what was really happening. And we saw that cup of salvation in the Hallel that they were singing. And he was drinking of the cup. He was drinking of the wrath of God so we would not have to experience the wrath of God. And this is why I say that the rapture will happen before. And this is why we're saved from the time of Jacob's trouble. So the night of the Passover Seder, you're to open the door and look out and look up and see if Elijah has come. And maybe 
this is going to be the night of watching when they were taken out of Egypt maybe we'll be taken out of our Egypt and into the glory cloud as the transfiguration demonstrated and we'll be with the Lord forever and he'll take us into a Garden of Eden like state where we will be in the most exquisite lush beauty that we have never known and with that I'll just say hold on to this promise with all your heart and let it touch you deeply because God is revealing all of this for our day and I just want everybody to be blessed by this message you've got your best friend the Holy Spirit with you and in you and he's never going to leave you or forsake you no matter how things are and no matter how bad they look on the outside we're going up and leaving Egypt was that night and will it be the night when we leave I sure hope so I'm not setting any dates I'm not saying that it is going to happen at Passover I'm just giving you from the scripture that there is a night of watching that Israel was commanded to always generation after generation to have a vigil on this night and that vigil means to watch and pray and ironically Jesus told us to watch so that we can escape the things that are coming on the earth good night for now Whew. so incredible <laughs>